Yeri Vadrivo. <laughs> guys welcome back to another episode of game of thrones today we'll be watching episode four of season six book of the stranger well you know what we lost john we've got back john and he has every right to leave castle black even though he did everything to try and make peace to try and see the bigger picture to try and put aside the vows of of the of the night's watch the workings of the night's watch for eight thousand years the past aside and see what's at hand because the main thing that one thing at least manasandre was talking about is the war that is to come and with the stark saying winter is coming and we know that there are there are a crazy ton of undead um, we saw that in episode 9 of Hard Home and with the Wildlings now fighting for them the army has just quadrupled in strength and without enough ammunition with fire, dragon glass or valerian steel there are there is seriously zero chance of them actually fighting this and you know we need all the allies we can get and I actually appreciated what John did and till the end he tried his best but then that got the better of him he literally died for the Night's Watch as his vow states uh, from this night and all the nights to come you know he will stand guard and he died so two lock commanders betrayed by their own men and it's just showing the value of the Night's Watch. Now it's just going down the, the meaning of protecting the realm because they have petty, uh, you know, see, I can't say that it's petty because this is what they know. This is what they have been taught and this is what's been followed for so long. So I'm not saying that what Alistair did was wrong, but at the same time, you also broke your own vow to protect your own brother, no matter what the consequences, because you get all sorts of people coming to the Night's Watch who have done crap about the past. And that's all pardoned because you are doing a bigger cause. You are being a part of a bigger cause. And to kill a Lord Commander that seriously did save quite a lot of wildlings and as I said, not seeing the bigger picture was foolish and in the end costed them their lives because, uh, you know, it's it's exactly like how you would think. Like, it, it, again, I understand both sides to the story. I understand John said and I understand Alyssa and what they all did. But killing Jon Snow was the dumbest shit that they could have ever tried and put across if anything as i said uh, i can't remember if i did but they could have at least had a boat to get him removed from as the post of lock commander because they didn't agree with what he did rather than killing your own brother because he did take the vow and you did too so in part of the vow you are not only protecting the realm but you are standing guard alongside your brother so as i said the value of the night's watch is going down in drains because of petty like you know pettiness like this so as i i completely understand john snow if he wants to leave castle black he can as to where he's going to go i i mean there's nothing but down meaning going straight through the wildlings past Winterfell and you're heading towards south well we know only about north and south so in terms of um, map I'm not sure where I'm assuming he might just find a way to maybe live with the wildlings because he's made peace with them in terms of family but then again I don't I because you know Brienne is 
there are so many people who know that John is Lock Commander. And that is a vital information for people trying to find their way home, at least to John. So I'm very scared about that. But I understand what he wants to do. And if he wants to leave, he has to leave. Like, this is not his place anymore. This is being a part of the Night's Watch is done. But yeah, let's see what he does. I assume that he is going to go um, to the Wild Links for some reason because, you know, he's made peace with Tormund and I'm pretty sure the Wild Links will open their arms for him because, you know, they saved him. I mean, he saved them. So um, it's a big deal. So, yeah, and plus he loved a wildling, so I'm pretty, and he's lived with them, so I, I, you know what, what the fuck, he can live, be a wildling for all I know, but yeah, so let's see what happens. But um, everything's ready, my book's ready, my pen's ready, my my bell is ready, everything's ready. So let's find out what book of the stranger is, and hopefully we get some good quality storytelling. And yeah, let's find out. Let's not wait further. Let's get right to it. Currently watching and working at the same time, so excuse me. <laughs> Where are you gonna go? Mm. So, okay. what are you gonna do? Get warm? I was with you at Hard Home. We saw what's out there. You, know, you swore a vow. I, I pledge my life to the Night's Watch. I gave my life. For all nights to come. They killed me, Ed, my own brothers. You want me to stay here after that? I agree. I, I mean, I understand. Oh my god! Yes! Freaking Sansa's here! I didn't actually expect her to be here right now. How long has it passed? They found us! I'm keeping calm. I'm keeping calm. It's a happy day. It's a happy day. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. It's hot here. Yes, I am so happy. <laughs> oh. Do you remember those kidney pies, old man? Don't you wish we could go back to the day we left? I want to scream at myself. Don't go, idiot. How could we know? How could you know? I spent a lot of time thinking about what an ass I was to you. We were children. I was awful, just admit it. Aww. You were occasionally awful. <laughs> I'm sure I can't have been grateful on always sulking in the corner while the rest of you played. I am trying so hard not to cry, okay? I'm really trying. It's such a great scene. I really want to take it in rather than freaking covering my eyes with mascara. <laughs> <coughs> Where will you go? Go. Where will we go? Good. Father's ghost will come back and murder me. <laughs> Where will we go? There's only one place we can go. Home. Uh, what's your plan with that? We'll the bones to pack up and leave. We'll take it back from them. I think they'll be safe here if Roose Bolton remains warden of the north. Sounds oh, Winterfell is our home. It's ours. And Arya's and Bran's and Rickon's, wherever they are, it belongs to our family. We have to fight for it. I'm tired of fighting. I've killed brothers of the Night's Watch. I've killed wildlings. I've killed men that I admire. I hanged a boy younger than Bran. I fought. And I lost. If we don't take back the North, we'll never be safe. I want you to help me, but I'll do it myself if I have to. Sansa Stark, you may survive us yet. I love this. I will do as Jon Snow commands. Oh. You saw Jon Snow now? 
is the prince that was promised. Oh. No, my lady, I thought that was Stannis. What happened down there? She burned Shireen. You was a battle. Track of us. Stannis was defeated. I'm Shireen. What happened to the princess? I saw what happened. I was King's guard to Renly Baratheon before Renly was assassinated with blood magic. I forgot you were too out here. Past now. This is in the past. Doesn't mean I forget. Or forgive. He admitted it, you know. Who did? Stannis. Just before I executed him. Holy shit. Rianne for the win. Don't take too long. Where the fuck are you aiming? If you aim with your eye, as Thoris of Mir's uh, partner said, you're not actually hit it. The defender of the veil, Uncle Peter. Last time I saw you, Baelish, you told me you were taking Sansa Stark home with you to the Fingers. Indeed I was. And yet, not long ago, we received reports that she has been married to Ramsay Bolton in Winterfell. On our way to the Fingers, we were set upon by a large force of Bolton men. We seemed to know exactly when we were travelling and exactly whom we were transporting. Do you take me for a fool? Good job. How many people knew of my travel plans with Sansa Stark? He's turning this against you. you. And no one else. Your home is the Vale. The Lord of the Vale stands before us. And only his judgment concerns me. This guy is worse than common. Should we throw him through the moon door? My lord, I have always been faithful to House Aaron. To your father, to your mother, and now to you. Do you believe him, Uncle Peter? He's enjoyed a distinguished military career. If we could trust his absolute loyalty, he would make a capable commander in the wars to come. So now you owe him for saving your life. You can trust my absolute loyalty, my lord. Lord Royce, I suggest you find another I place bring good to be news. a lord. My friends <clears throat> in the north tell me Sansa has escaped Winterfell. I expect she's headed to Castle Black where her brother serves as lord commander. But she won't be safe there. Not with the Boltons after her. Gather the knights of the Vale. The time has come to join the fray. You invite the enemy into our city. I did. Come. Today is a calm day. A man once told me, we make peace with our enemies, not our friends. I don't make peace with the Queen's enemy. Our Queen tried to make peace with the masters, and they tried to murder her. My own recent experience with slavery has taught me the horrors of that institution. How many days were you a slave? Long enough to know. Wow. Not long enough to understand. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> she had you there, babe. The lovely. See, this is dialogue. I, I love it. We came here to meet the Queen. And instead, we're greeted by a dwarf and a eunuch. Let's mm. make this simple, shall we? We want you to leave Slaver's Bay. Mm. Take your dragons and your mercenaries and go. When we last met, I offered her ships so she could return to Westeros where she belongs. She refused them. She refused them because hundreds of thousands of men, women and children still lived in chains. As they have since the dawn of time. Just because your master has silver hair and tits doesn't mean she's not a master. There have always been those with wealth and power and those with nothing. That is the way of the world. I'm not here to change the way of the world. Slavery is the way of our world. You don't need slaves to make money. There haven't been slaves in Westeros for hundreds of years, and I grew up richer than any of you. Our queen recognizes that she erred by abolishing slavery without providing a new system to replace it. Here is the queen's proposal. Ooh. Slavery will never return to Marine, but she will give the other cities of Slaver's Bay time to adjust to the new order. What does that mean? Instead of abolishing slavery overnight, we will give you seven years to end the practice. Seven years? Uh... Slaveholders will be compensated for the losses, of course, at fair prices. In exchange, you will cut off your support for the sons of the harpy. You will not receive a better offer. But that's seven more years for a slave to be a slave. Freedom, instead of being drowned by it. Give freedom a chance. See if it doesn't taste every bit as good as what came before. You met with the slavers today. I did. Our brothers and sisters died fighting these scum. 
Now you invite them to our city and drink wine with them. Imagine this room was built so the rulers could intimidate the ruled. You are a stranger here. Hello. So why do you represent Mirin in these talks with our enemies? Because our queen chose me as her advisor. Until she returns from her travel. When does she return? Soon. You have my word. We don't trust you. We know Torgonudu. We fight with him against the masters. We trust him. And that is exactly why Grey Worm took part in these negotiations. As commander of the Unsullied, he knows how to defeat the slavers. He knows yeah, that it is like time to make peace. You have made peace with the slavers? We offered terms. I am loyal to my queen, not you. If you betray her work, you are my enemy. I am not betraying her work. I am trying to save her city. You promised the slavers that could keep slavery. For a short time. Seven years is not a short time for a slave. Slavery is a horror that should be ended at once. War is a horror that should be ended at once. I can't do both today. Okay, you are I'm wrong to that. trust these men. I don't trust the masters. I trust their self-interest. You don't understand them. We are not human in their eyes. They look at me and see a weapon. They look at her and see a whore. They look at me and they see a misshapen little beast. Their contempt is their weakness. They'll underestimate us every time and we will use that to our advantage. You will not use them. They will use you. That is what they do. Who do I go for? Like, who is the right person in this party? I don't think you could ride the dragon. 20 years ago, maybe. What? Our queen. She's wild, you know. Don't let a science fool you. It's hard enough for me, and I'm a young man. I don't think your heart could take it. My God, what's this conversation? You'll disappoint her before long. She'll move on. We'll all disappoint her before long. We need each other right now. After we're done needing each other. Oh, I don't want to fight you, Jura the Andal. What do I have to gain? Road running through the horse gate they call that the God's Way. East the market, west the market. When Karl Drogo died, she was supposed to come here and join the Dosh Kalim. Ah, yes. of the dead girl. That's where they'll have taken her. Smart, the Jorah. The Dosh Kalim. What are you doing? It's forbidden to carry weapons in the sacred city. Isn't it forbidden to sneak into their city and steal their Khaleesi? If they spot us, we're unarmed. See, we're traders heading for the Western Market. You're lucky. Um, very attached to this knife. Mm. Oh, the cord is kissing me. <laughs> I just realized. Don't worry. It didn't touch you. You know what happens? I know what happens. I'll do it myself. The dots are okay. I'm looking too wild for my life. Gioke Oceani. <laughs> Isn't that guy from uh, Good Doctor? Lovely. You're right. If they find a body with a stab wound, the whole city will be looking for us. Oh, yeah, you grew up in a so so. Loi Jip Bigoveri, if I kiss. Asilaki, Yankasoros, Chiorias, Zin, Hajaki, Lazari. Actually, Jula sends a Borsi's 
We will never get out of face of track alive. All we can do is try. What do you want to do, Kalisi? Maya. Askoya Nisha Kalisi. Maya Askoya. The goosies. If I were to let you leave right now, where would you go? I got What would you seek out? Brother. Then grandmother. It goes to my brother. Yes, very obvious. My husband, my family. Seeking out your family means seeking out sin. Okay. I, I'm not maligning you. I sort those things out too. To the exclusion of all else. My father was a cobbler. Was he now? When I was young. Shocking you have no shoes on? Shop. You know, fine leather, ornamentation, detailing, and time. Time, most of all. Dozens of hours spent on a single pair. Well, as he takes time. <laughs> The highborn like to cover their feet with my time, and they paid well for the privilege. I used their money to buy a taste of their lives for myself. Each time I indulged, I felt myself ascending to something better. And one day you walked through a graveyard and realized it was all for nothing, and set out on the path to righteousness. Look at the stranger, verse 25. You know the seven-pointed star? Excuse me, Lala reads it to me. I bought old fine wine and young pretty girls. And invited my friends to come and share it. Passed around the wine, passed around the women. And soon we fell into a stupor. Everyone else was asleep on the couches or on the floor. Sounds like Wall Street. Lying in heaps next to their fine clothes. The truth of their bodies laid bare. And I saw it with perfect clarity. And saw what my sins were. The gold I had, the wine I drank, the women I used, my ceaseless struggle to maintain my position a collection of lies that would disappear in the light the people i was trying to climb away from the beggars in the street the poor they were closer to the truth than i ever was i left car on point them. eyelashes i didn't even put on my shoes i walked out the door and never went back let's go and see him hey your brother he's trying to get you confess your sins by getting you into this oh my god Morris. you need to stay strong I can't stay strong I never was strong you are strong you are the future of our house, the future of our family. We don't care about that. Shh, we told them that, that you don't care. I just want to stop. They want me to help tear you down. That's why he's letting me see you, I know it is. Yeah. if either of us get in to what they want, then they win. Let them win, so we can stop. <laughs> advising the king on our current predicament leave i am a member of the small council the king's is small... this a small council meeting obviously not thank you for your counsel grand Maester. that will be all for now wow your grace about time you spoke up and made your own decisions king whoa Oh my god. I guess Since I've missed very transparent with each other. You need to be careful in dealing with such a man. To prevent things from escalating any further, you have to be careful not to antagonize him. He has Marjorie. We can't put her at risk. He's dangerous. Look at me. What did they do to me? To the king's own mother. Marjorie's safety is paramount. Is it? You don't like Marjorie, do you? It's not a do you. You don't like Marjorie. Whether I like her or not, it's completely unimportant. Mm. Guy Sparrow has no respect for kings or queens. No respect for anything in this world. 
He has no use for the things of this world. He wants to knock them down and replace them with what? With beggars in the street. With nothing. You've spoken with him. Yep. In great detail. I promised him I wouldn't tell anyone. If he found out I told... breach of confidence, which he would not take lightly, given his constant prattling about the truth. The whole council meeting has been postponed on the king's orders. I would have thought we were perfectly clear the first time. You're not welcome. He once spoke of your respect for our father because he understood the necessity of working with one's rivals. My dear, you have been stripped of your dignity and authority, publicly shamed and confined to the Red Keep. What's left to work with? She is the mother of the king. She has the king's ear and his trust. Now the future of the Seven Kingdoms rests in his dirty peasant hands. In a few days, he'll have a trial for me. But before that, Queen Marjorie will make her walk of atonement. Marjorie will repent her sins before the good people of the city. That cannot happen. That will not happen. I agree. You've got the second largest army in Westeros. We'll bring them into the city. Stop Queen Marjorie's humiliation before it starts. The king has ordered me to take no action against the High Sparrow or the Faith Militant out of fear for the queen's safety. You will take no action at all. When the Tyrell armies come, you will stand down. Are you expressly forbidden from standing down? When the High Sparrow's in custody, or dead, preferably, and Marjorie's back at Tommen's side, do you think the king would be angry at the outcome? You hate these fanatics as much as we do. You hate what they've done to your son. Do you want Lancel back? Or have you given him up for good? So they want the Tyrell army to help them... It doesn't them go as planned. The Sparrows have many friends in this city. Oh, that's what I was going We'll ask. have civil war. Many will die. Many will die no matter what we do. Better them than us. Well, that's what exactly the High Spire was on about. So they're waiting for the Tyrell army, along with the King's Guard and all the, the armies that they have, to take a chance on the High Sparrow. But the risk is they could hurt Marjorie. They told me you were home and I didn't believe it. Theon Greyjoy, I said, is dead. He's been dead a long time. I don't think I can hold my tears for this one, actually. He let you go. Look at me. Look at me. Men died trying to rescue you. Good men. My men. You were a spoiled little cunt, but you were my brother, and I risked everything for you. And you betrayed me. I know. I know, and I'm sorry. Stop saying that. He broke me. Broke me into a thousand pieces. I know. You don't know. He sent us one of those pieces. Why did you come here? <laughs> Where else could I go? You heard father was dead and you thought you'd claim the crown. <laughs> no, no, I only heard he died after we docked. You happened to show up on Pike right before the king's move. I didn't know. I should have listened to you. You're the only that one. That doesn't who... matter anymore. Stop crying. <laughs> Look at me. Tell me what you want. You should rule the Iron Islands. Let me help you. Oh, fuck. I don't know why, but Theon is just kidding me every time, dude. You know who I am? Fucking idiot is A what? lord. Yes. A lord. You've seen my banners. The flayed man. You served the Starks. Aye. They put me in chains and put a sword at my throat. So I serve them. The Starks have been gone for a long time, but you kept protecting Rickon. You fetch a good price to the right buyer. I served his family a long time, didn't get no wages. Well, I see it. I'm old. Rickon's not yours to sell anymore. He's mine. I can give you what you want. Are you sure you know what that is? <sighs> Same thing men always want. I mean, they really want it. Give it a bath first. You're a much better talker than Theon Greyjoy. Not so. I had to work hard to get him talking. All about the Stark boys who helped them escape and how she did
Sorry about the food. It's not what we're known for. That's all right. There are more important things. To the traitor and Buster John Snow, you allowed thousands of wildlings past the wall. You have betrayed your own kind. You have betrayed the North. Winterfell is mine, Buster. Come and see. Your brother Rickon is in my dungeon. I want my bride back. Send her to me, bastard, and I will not trouble you or your wildling lovers. Keep her from me, and I will ride north and slaughter every wildling man, woman, and babe living under your protection. You will watch as my soldiers take turns raping your sister. You will watch as my dogs devour your wild little brother. Then I will spoon your eyes from their sockets and let my dogs do the rest. Come and see. Ramsay Bolton, Lord of Winterfell. His father's dead. Ramsay killed him. And now he has Rickon. We don't know that. Yes, he has we do. Rickon. How many men does he have in his army? The Karstarks, the Omnibus. I heard him say once when he was talking about Stannis' attack. How many do you have that can march and fight? Two thousand. The rest are children and old people. But, but, this Baelish is coming with the Knights of the Vale. Northern families are loyal. They'll fight for you if you ask. A monster? has taken our home and our brother. We have to go back to Winterfell and save them both. Mhm. <laughs> you sound like Viserys. Hmm. Not something she your <laughs> Rather than your dragons, this, this is, yes, I like this. Prove your point here, babes. Wow, you are handsome. <laughs> wow, man, look at her. <laughs> Jeez, Khaleesi. <laughs> praise, praise, God damn. Oh, God. 
that was fab. This is exactly what I wanted Khaleesi to do. Not use her dragons to her advantage. Like, I wanted her to be the queen that she is to rule using her voice using yes getting advice from her advice but people should know that she's a queen not because of her dragons but she's a queen because of her like of herself and using that this power to take down the temple where women of it's you know it's so insulting like because you are um the the why the widow of the the Khals, you are in this particular temple like you're almost like looked down at even though you're not allowed to you know force yourself on the widow and whatnot it doesn't matter the the entire temple comes like that is where she not only re revealed to the world that she was you know, that her uh, her baby would mount, is the stallion that would mount the world and, you know, take the Iron Throne or whatever, what all Karl Drogo promised. She burnt it down, like, because not only did it not happen, but it also, like, there is a lot of significance in, in that scene. Like, you know, she didn't think for a second because that is exactly what she said, where Karl Drogo promised... But Karl Drog was not here and she is now in this position where she can show off her powers by being the magic that she is. And, you know, yes, her dragons are part of that power. But what I'm trying to say is she's not using directly the dragons to make a point or... I, I don't want... She's making a point by being herself that she is the unburnt. And she is the mother of dragons, excluding the badass that she is already. So I love that. Like that itself is so great. And for her to burn this place, that means possibly a lot for her in terms of memories with what the Carl promised. It's a big thing because she didn't think twice. She said that the Carl, th these guys are not fit to rule the Dothraki, but she is. All the threats that they were making because they know that they won't follow a, mo a woman or any other leader that is not a man and whatnot. The, you know, all that idle threats, everything is placed, like everything she has seen. She's seen the Viserys, like, you know, where the horses will take their turn. Viserys said the same thing, her own brother and the full Dothraki army have undermined her. And now it's just like, how how much more idle threats do you want to make before you know what? I will make, I will show you why you all have to fear me. And she does it like pure like fab. She didn't even leave. She had the opportunity to leave, but she didn't. And that's what really gets me because man, like you know because. It's just, yes, the entire vice Dothrak would have been on her if she had left. But now this, they're all on her side. And now she is a step further to getting the Iron Throne. And I love that she is inspiring people by being herself. Like you could see, she's not asking them to, she comes out and they. she's magic. I mean, they have, it's not that they have, a, they have a choice to leave, for sure, I'm pretty sure, because she's all about the choice and whatnot. And she's all about giving freedom and letting people make their own choices. But this, it just goes to show that, you know, my money is on this chica to, to rule everything. <clears throat> so, and that is not even including her dragons, that's just her being her. So, I commend her for using her own strengths to prove a point, which I love, as I keep saying. Like when <clears throat> she was using the her dragons that she had chained in, I think, season five um, with Hizzy Boy. And I didn't like that. <clears throat> I didn't like that of her because not only have you chained your own children in a dungeon, 
but you're also using them to your advantage, which I didn't like to prove a point. That is something that you're not supposed to do. You're, you are better than that, which, which is why then I was just thinking that, where are you going with this? I think season five of Danny was really more of her trying to show that she's a queen. Like, oh, you don't believe me? Oh God, I have to do something like vicious <clears throat> and then get across that, which I didn't like. I liked this Danny. I like this Danny. I like the Danny that we saw in season one. <clears throat> I love that. She's using her, like, her mind and her own self to to get there so i love that but not using her dragons to her advantage if the dragons are there protecting her and then they are doing whatever they have to as being dragons like what drogon did in the the pit that is phenomenal the the, the drogon coming in she made a connection to her children because she needed them in that moment of need and she used that power to her advantage because there she can't prove a point there it's not just her it's her her full council that are also at risk even though she did leave them there i don't know how they survived that but she did because the dragon left with her so and she wrote the freaking thing so it's it makes sense for her to use the dragon then i know i'll have some people saying that's not right but that's what i feel and in this that's exactly it happening like she's using her own magic to get there i think i'm repeating myself way too much but that's where i am at um i i can't believe you know as soon as i saw theon first of all let's go from the start i am so happy john and sansa have reunited i think I was in shock when I saw, because I didn't actually expect them to reach, I knew they were heading to John, but I didn't think that it would happen to Castle Black. And immediately when I was actually talking about it in the intro, I, I was scared that he would leave before they would arrive and we'd have to go on this wild goose chase again for Sansa to find John, which makes no sense because we're, again, repeating ourselves in terms of timeline. But when we saw them when we when i the doors opened i just i just could not believe it and it was such a it was for me it was such a happy moment because for me i was just thinking like god thank god she's finally reached because it's taken forever for her to go and she deserves it so i was you know, I was shocked that I didn't cry. I was tearing up a bit, but I really didn't cry because I was so happy. And I wanted it to continue that way. And I was, it was such an emotional moment in a very good way. And that music in the background, when she sees him, when, you know, she, when she was hugging him, she does that little thing. Like she is in the arms of someone she knows, her brother she trusts him she's with her family that's the first family i'm getting goosebumps talking about it that's the first family she's seen since everything and they discuss that with john like don't like what they could have done without leaving winterfell none of this would have happened but you know everything happens for a reason and i think you would have all stayed naive without this experience however harsh it may be is what i think i think everything that everything bad that happens to you is more like a learning curve and that's one of the reasons why not everyone can always be happy 24 7 because then you won't have anything to achieve you won't have anything to reflect back from or learn from and i think that scene even though they say that i like want to tell say 14 year old Sansa not to go don't go you idiot like you know stay in Winterfell stay happy in Winterfell you would have still stayed the same if you were still there not respecting the values of home or anything if not for this you know this unfortunate journey that she and John and everyone John I think was a little extreme I mean if not for the magic of the the Lord of Light 
that would have been a stupid plot line in itself for them to have killed him. But if because he's back and we're talking about self-reflection, I think it's like, it's almost essential for them to have grown up and be the way that they are. Like, as Maester Eamon said to John, like to make the hard decisions as Lord Commander, you'll always get the hate, but you have to kill the boy and be the man. Like, you know, let the man grow and... All that only happens when you're given, you're put in that circumstance. And I truly appreciate that scene. And, you know, I love that. I don't know if it was part of the, the scene or if it's just general acting that they did or it was part of the script. But when, seriously, when Sansa is like, you know, when she's hugging him and she does that, I, that itself really got me because I, I felt that, like I felt her let go like she's been clenching her fists for so long that now she can just release and open her arms it's like she's now seeing daylight she's always been trapped in this tunnel where she couldn't see anything and now she sees that light she finds her way out and the light is Jon Snow so I love that I love that reunion and it was such a happy scene. Like for me, I genuinely, you know, I think many people would have definitely felt emotional because of the journey that she's been through. But more so, I am so happy because it was long overdue. And I just wanted, because we knew it was going to happen. Actually, no, because with the world that we are in, nothing is safe. But I hoped that we would see uh you know like what it would be like with john and um john and sansa reuniting and all of that so i i truly appreciated that scene and um then we go to theon and i seriously theon is one of the characters that i never thought that i would be empathizing with on such a level i was truly in not in, in um like i i felt more for theon than i have felt for like sansa meeting john because for theon he had the opportunity to leave but he didn't and now he did saving sansa and he is now chosen to leave and take that step in and the courage to find his sister and now he is there saying that I will help you rule the Iron Islands. Like, like, damn, dude. Fabulous. Like, you know, the, the Theon arc is, is one of my favorites because we see him as this character that is stuck up. Like, you know, he is, he doesn't care for anything and he, he messes around and he betrayed Rob and, but, you know, again, he had to go on that journey to reflect himself. And I truly love that. I love that Theon's character arc is going in the direction that is sort of like redemption to him. And he is now trying, He, I'm pretty sure what he's going to do is try his best to be a really, not just a brother, but to be feel whole even though he's got so much ripped out of him he's lost so much he will feel a whole and that's something that you know i commend on and he helped sansa like people may not forgive him for what he did but i'm pretty sure like you know with what he's trying to do to you know to get back in the good books it's you can see that right through and I felt that thick through and through with Theon and then when when they killed Tongs I just couldn't like I, I I'm so done with the character Ramsay like he's just it's it's enough enough of Ramsay being Ramsay like I cannot stand because he's just viciously cruel like and I know he's that I know that's his character and he's doing a wonderful job as an actor but oh like fuck man enough how much 
I can't stand him anymore. Like, it's... It, Ramsey seriously has to die. <laughs> I am ready for his character to seriously get killed in the most brutal way by his own banner. Like, I think a justifiable death of Ramsey would be Ramsey being skinned and mutilated and being put on the cross, like not cross, sorry, on the X, um, just like that. That that's that's I think a fair punish not punishment, fair death for him. I th at least that's what I think. But I just want him to die. I think he is he has to be a goner. <laughs> Seriously, I can't take him anymore. Like it's it's getting to my nerves. He has killed Tonks, which we have not seen her in so long, gets captured, a wildling who knows how to cover her tracks and gets fucking captured. And then, which I still cannot understand because she is a person that's lived in the wild. If she could not have seen the, what, who captured them? Umbers or Kastak, whoever captured them. Like, come on. I, I felt like Tonks was smarter than that. And I think they just made it just so that they could kill her like that she had to be captured by Ramsey which I feel is such shit for me at least um because we don't see her at all for what three seasons and then she just comes out of nowhere being captured there too come on um but yeah and then I think in all that crying I think I may have noticed Tormund taking a major interest towards Brienne <laughs> I, I couldn't even actually uh, be with that. Like, I couldn't even enjoy that scene because of what Tongs went through. And uh, I I feel like the way he was ripping into the chicken and then the and then Ed looking at that. I'm pretty sure it was uh, <laughs> Tom and taking a liking towards Bria. <laughs> I think that's amazing. I think that's... Oh, two giants with each other. I mean, why not? <laughs> Jamie Lannister has a tough, tough competition. But um, yeah, that's insane. And then um, the entire thing about Tyrion. I, you know what? I understand both sides to the side of Tyrion. Like, I understand what Grey Worm wants to do. I understand what the Masters are trying to say. I understand what uh, Tyrion is trying to do. All in all, I just think that what's to say that in those seven years that he's given them luxury that they won't attack like maybe they might you know maybe this uh, i don't know like possibly say the slaves find a way to kill the masters what's to say the slaves don't attack the unsullied and in turn attacking the queen like because that they made a plan saying that they have to be slaves for seven more years so that they can get used to the change. I don't know. I just don't un understand what to do in such a situation. Like, uh, I understand the law is the law, but she abolished slavery and still the sons of Harpy found a way to attack her. So what exactly is the next plan to do? I, th I think, you know... I as I say, she should not use her dragons to her advantage. She should rule and use her her motives to establish that she is Queen Daenerys in a better way. But I just don't know how. Like, because she opened the fighting pits, they still attacked. So it means that they are not for the queen. I mean, not for the fighting pits. They are more for like, to take down Daenerys because she just comes out of nowhere takes everything that they know this is a tradition that like i'm pretty sure that daenerys can't just go say to freaking kings not king's landing sorry uh uh the night's watch say and say that this is mine when the night's watch have a different law in altogether you can't just come any like i understand that i understand that very well but i think her motives towards abolishing slavery have gone a tad bit south um and she's she has to find the right you know break even point to to put things in place maybe she could say that 
I will leave Marine as long as you abolish slavery. That would, I don't think would work actually. See, this is why I can't think of things because they will say yes to it. And once she leaves, they will just go back to their ways. But that has to be a tougher way. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Because slavery is not good for sure. But if that's the way that they have known, it's like you're, you're getting rid of a thousand year tradition just because you don't like the idea of it. But that's how they make their trade and whatnot. But as Tyrion said, that is not the way you can make trade. Like Tyrion is smart, like richer in Westeros by not having the slavery um, as their main point of trade. And they are much richer than these guys. So I understand where Tyrion is going with that. But I just don't know if that's the right thing because I feel like they are going to... I think, I just feel like nothing will work. Nothing you say will work. That's my thing. Like they are attacking you nev no matter what you say. So yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll find out what exactly would happen, but that's just my thing. And um, and then Baelish. Baelish says that he has to take the Knights of the Veil vale and help Sansa. Did he sort of, I mean, I think he, because he has freaking planned everything from the get-go and knows what could happen so he knows that if Sansa has escaped Winterfell and he knows now what Ramsay is like Ramsay would attack Castle Black and in order to do that they would need to help Sansa because Sansa would tell that of course it was Baelish that helped that married her off to um to um Ramsay knowing that he's part of the veil and possibly Baelish knowing that, you know, the about the wildlings and whatnot, and that wildlings would side with John in anything. I think it was a calculated, not I think, it is a calculated move to help Sansa. But I, I think just to get in the good books with John so that, so that um, he can justify what he did and of course for fucking everything that he did with ned and you know the boltons and again marrying her off and whatnot so let's see what happens i am not really sure but i'm guessing we are going to with with the letter that ramsey said that he will attack the wildlings and mm, yeah warden of the north I can't call it. Anyway, I'll see you guys in episode five. This was a long outro. I just thought that I should get that out of the way. And I spoke a lot about Daenerys, but seriously, that entire scene truly shock. I loved it, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you in episode five. Bye guys.